All right, let's jump back into our packet. We're on week four, day two for ELA. Week four, day two, ELA. Also, hello, how are you? I hope you're well, I miss you, I love you. Okay, here we go. Quick reminder, we're working on the packet that looks like this in the part that looks like this, the ELA part for week four. Okay, so jumping into our phonics work, uh, yesterday we were thinking about how OI coin OI and OI boy OI both make the OI sound. And OI is an example of a diphthong, which is when two vowels come together and they make a sound that changes a little bit while you say it, like OI, OI, try saying it. It's kind of fun, right? Okay, so for part one of your phonics work, you are going to love this. All you got to do is look at those blanks and figure out to make the word, do I want to have an O-I or an O-Y for the O-I sound? And you're just going to see which one looks right. Which one does my brain recognize? Okay, and you're just going to do your best with that. And then I want you to take a little gander at this um, cowgirl, cowboy party scene. Looks very fun. But there's a word bank there, and you're going to use those words, which are points, enjoy, soil, noise, join, and boiled, because down below, you're going to fill in the sentences with the oi word that makes sense. So you're going to complete these six sentences. You'll use the words from the uh, word box. You'll use each one once, and we'll check those answers tomorrow in our next video for day three. Oisome. I couldn't resist you guys, I'm sorry. You know I'm oil about a good pun. Nothing's changed, even in distance learning. Oil never stop. Okay, I'm done. Okay, so next, I want us to check your work from yesterday, um, from the true false question game um, about North America. So go ahead, flip back a couple pages and get to your true false question game. It looks like this. Let's check your answers. If you got it right, little check mark. If you didn't get it right, no big deal. You can change your answer as we go. That's totally fine. Number one, the United States has 50 states. That is true, T for two. But it is important to note as Washingtonians, people who live in Washington, DC, that there are 50 states, but there's also two other places. We're called territories. So DC is one of them. We're not officially a state, we're a territory. And the other one is Puerto Rico, which is an island. Um, so Puerto Rico and DC don't count as states, but um, technically there are 50 states. Maybe it'll change one day, but right now, 50 states. Next, North America is the biggest continent. That is false. Though North America is really big, the biggest continent is any guesses? Asia, the biggest continent is Asia. Asia is so big, it has 48 countries in it. And some of those countries like Russia and China are some of the biggest countries in the whole world. Whoa. Next up, the Mexican flag is red, white, and green. That is true, mostly. So the big colors on Mexico's beautiful flag are green, white, and red. So most of the time we think of that as their, as their colors, but if you look in the middle, there's that beautiful design. That's called a crest. It's got like a bird eating a snake and there's a cactus. And it's all these things that are connected to Mexico. But if you look, you can see there's some blue, there's some yellow, even a little pink. So though the big colors are green, white, and red, and that's what we officially count as Mexico's colors, now you know that there's a little bit of some other colors in there too, but we will say that fact is true. So now if you get in a little tussle with somebody who says, the Mexican flag only has red, white, and green on it, you can say, yes, mostly, but look at the crest. And you can just wow them with your flag knowledge, which is a great thing to have. Speaking of flags, the next one says, the flag of Canada looks very similar to the US flag. This is false. No way, that's crazy. Look at this flag. The Canadian flag is all red and white and it has a giant maple leaf on it. I don't know about you, but I don't see any maple leaves on the American flag, right? 
No way. Very different. Both cool, both different. Next up, Mexico is an island. That is false. An island is a landform that's surrounded on all sides by, by water. And look at Mexico. It's surrounded by a lot of water, but only on two sides. Up north, which means on the top, it connects to the United States. And on the bottom, down south, it connects to two other countries, Guatemala and Belize. And that was a question on every teacher's favorite game show, Jeopardy, the other night. So keep it in your head. Guatemala, Belize. Very important. Up next, the three largest countries in North America are the United States, Canada, and Mexico. That is true. They're huge. The biggest. True. Next, it says Mexico is north of the United States. North means on top, so this is false. Actually, Mexico is south of the United States. Remember, north means up, south means down, so they are opposites of each other. Next up, the primary language in Canada is English. That is true. Most people in Canada speak English. Then the next one says the primary language in Mexico is Spanish. That is also true. The number one language in Mexico is Spanish. So for a lot of us, you could go to Canada and Mexico and speak the language. Very cool. If that's you, if you are bilingual, awesome. I want to travel with you. And if you're not quite bilingual yet like me, we'll keep working on it. Because then we can go everywhere in North America, which would be so fun and cool. Okay, now let's look at your work for today. So, you are going to read this text. It's called Three Great Countries by Kate Piaxo. And then you're going to answer some questions. Really nice and straightforward. You're going to read the article, and then you're going to answer some questions. This is the article, and these are the questions. Now, these are text-dependent questions which means we want our answers to come from the text. We're not making anything up. We're not using our background knowledge. We're using the text to answer these three questions. The first question says, why does the author refer to Canada, the United States of America, and Mexico as the three great countries of North America? You're gonna find that answer in the text. The next one says, what could we identify as the main topic of this article? Think about that after you read the text. And last but not least, what are some key details? Ooh, I love those. Key details from the text that support the identified main topic. So what are some details that support the main topic? I really, really want you to try to read the text all by yourself, I would say two times. Um, but it is tricky, so I want you to try it. If you're feeling like, Miss Wheat, uh-uh, I'm not getting it. I'm gonna post another video so you can follow along while I read the text out loud. But if you can do it all by yourself, that would be so good for your brain and that would be my first choice. Second choice though, I wanna make sure you're with me and you're understanding so we will have a read aloud version of the article, okay? Cool. Great, so I'm gonna leave you on your own. You're gonna do that phonics work you're going to read you're going to read that text and then you're going to answer those questions with evidence from the text um, and that's it for today looking forward to working with you again tomorrow love ya miss ya um, hope you're doing something fun today too besides this extremely fun learning and um, know that i'm thinking about you and i cannot wait to see you um, whenever that is okay love ya bye